Hail, the bard here, with a little bit of an impromptu thing, acting on a whim, as I sometimes do, I am about to record an English commentary of Stardom's September 12th, 2022 show in Kraken Hall. Now, if you have a subscription to Stardom World, well, you can watch along with me. But if you don't, well, of course you can listen. But you will have to imagine all of the scintillating Joshi wrestling action which is about to go down. Now, Stardom World uploads their matches in individual videos rather than one long show. So, what we're going to do is in a few moments, I'm going to say 3, 2, 1, and pause. And when I say pause, that's time to pause this recording. And that's when we start up our Stardom video. Now, every Stardom match on this show has a short intro. And right at the end of that intro, right after Azumi and Starlight Kid bump fists, the Stardom logo appears. And as soon as that logo appears, that's when you restart this recording. And we're going to do that multiple times throughout this, this whole thing. Once for every match. Now, let's get underway. Three, two, one, pause. And we are underway, and this is match number one of an indeterminate number at this point, although officially called match 00, zero here on my screen. It's going to be a tag team match featuring teams from two of the factions here in Stardom. Queen's Quest versus Oedo Tai. It looks like the, the Oedo Tai team coming out first. It will consist of Fukigen Death, the Gloomy Clown, <laughs> and Rena. The pink devil of Oero Tire, she is sometimes known, I believe. And a very dangerous and tricksy opponent she is. There's Fukigen Death coming out first, reading the local um, <laughs> publication, Tokyo Shimbun sports section, perhaps? I don't know. It may be. That's certainly a pro wrestling article I see there. Yeah, get them out of here. She's basically a walking shenanigan for those of you who have never seen Fukigen Death in action. We can expect shenanigans and treachery, and I believe we can expect similar stuff out of Rena, frankly. A languid pose out of Fukigen Death there. Rina, a four-year veteran at this point, despite being only 15, she made her debut at the age of 11, as did her sister, who is on the opposing team. There are, in fact, three of these sisters competing in stardom. Hanan we will see later in the next match, I believe. And now we're going to see the team from Queen's Quest, Lady C and Hina. Coming from the other end of the arena here, as is something of a tradition here in the legendary Korakuen Hall, where this event is taking place. Oh, emerging first, Lady C. And I would suggest that she is perhaps the most glamorous of all the wrestlers here in Stardom. Although I wouldn't say it too loudly, and certainly not within striking range of some of the other, other competitors. <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble. And there's Hina, Rina's sister. Both of whom have a strong judo background. There's Lady C taking command of that corner post there. Making the sign of Queen's Quest, one of the most venerable factions here in stardom. Ah, oh, yes, Duke Sado, the referee. And I apologize in advance, I'm probably going to call him the Romulan. Now and then, that is. For he is indeed known in these lands as the Romulan. I mean no insult, of course. That's just the nickname we came up with before we learned his name. His proper name, that is. A quick check of the gear, making sure nothing untoward is going on. Lady C. Going first for her team. Who's on the other team? Who's coming out first? F Fukigen Death, Pat, it is. It's Fukigen Death. Hands in pockets, nonchalant. Some would say disrespectful. I wouldn't say that. 
And we're going for a... Oh, look at Fugi again, death. Improper hand technique. Immediately Lady C making use of her incredible height. 177 centimeters of dynamite. Fuki Gendev can't match that. Unable to lock up. She calls for time. What else can you do? A little bit of a boost. A technical boost. Have we equalized? Not quite. We've got a long way to go before we can match up to the statuesque Lady C. I think we may have done it, though. Lady C looks a little annoyed at this. Having to jump to... to oh, straight straight to the... To the uh, maybe the throat. That might have been a throat strike. Certainly looks like it on the part of Lady C there. The way she was holding that neck. Fuki again, death. Treacherous. Here comes Rena. The pink devil of a word, Otai. Going straight for her sister, as I'm sure has happened many times in the past. Even preceding their, their professional wrestling careers. Oh, immediate octopus hold. In a hold such as this, perhaps um, Lady C's height isn't such an advantage. A lot of damage can be done to long limbs. Ahina's been isolated. The Romulan just letting this go. Duke Sado. Put those cigarettes out. Admonishment out of Lady C. You can't smoke at your age, Rena. Thank you. Oh, an abdominal stretch. Revenge for the octopus hold. Rena's right there at the ropes, though. Not a lot of scooching to do to get out of that. Russian leg sweep. Putting paid to that straight off. Beautiful knee drop. Only two. Far too soon in the match to win that way. Far too soon. Oh, a choke slam. Oh, Rita's out of it. That could have been the match right there. Choke slam is, of course, famously devastating. Ah, clothesline and a beautiful low angle for that clothesline, too, I might say. Lady C's stature, of course, very friendly to low angles, making the most of that height. Hina's coming in with Venom. She looks positively overjoyed to be battering her sister. I'm sure that's not uncommon. Who knows what ancient sisterly grudges could be drawn up throughout their whole lives. They're in opposing factions. They seem quite opposed in many things, as a matter of fact. Oh, oh. Oh, it looks like we're going to have a forearm duel at this point. A tradition. Wrestler's pride demands it. I'll take what you've got. You take what I got. See who cracks first. Who takes the initiative. The advantage. Strike after strike. Hair flying. Hina's got the advantage though. She's getting a rapid series of forearms there. Staggering Rena. Oh, a body check. Well placed. Oh, beautiful hip toss. A little bit of that judo experience coming out. Now what? Oh, now counted. Oh, Fuki get death with the newspaper. You're not supposed to do that. That is technically cheating. I don't know if the referee saw it at all. I've complained now and then about the referees in stardom, but not too strongly. The treacherous Fukigen death could do anything at any time. Look at this teamwork. They knew, they felt this coming. Lady C's being grappled, being held at bay by Rena. Hina's kicking out. Fukigen confirms the two with Duke Sado. Who is indeed probably one of my favourite referees. Oh, Fukien calls for a brain buster. It is delivered, but by Hina. <laughs> not by Fukien. I'm not sure I've ever seen Fukien deliver on one of her brain buster calls. Oh, a tandem move. 
Fuki ends down. The rescue comes from Rina. Mm hmm. Five minutes past, five minutes remaining. The time limits can be short. A handful of those shorts there, Fuki again, death. A little bit of, little bit of, sh oh, ghetto clutch. Has Hina got it? No. Rena's straight there. Like a bolt from the blue. Great thunder from Zeus's forge or anvil. Or from Zeus's general area. And maybe Thor is involved as well. Oh, Edo tie blasted. Oh no! So oh, they snaked out of it! And now a pin! That's pretty pinned! That's very pinned! In fact, that's three! Oh, Edo tie have taken it! <laughs> Fuki again, death! Like the thief she is! Thief, of course, in bardic parlance, referring more to you know, playful mischief than actual theft. But, you know, you could argue that that win was quite a bit stolen. It was at least sudden. Raise those hands, Duke Sato. Well earned. I'd say a deserved victory. I'm in favour of it. Looks like Lady C's got a problem with this. She's complaining. She'll have to take it up with management. Rena bails her out of the ring. Hina knows better than to stay in there. The victor's prerogative. Returning to the back in victory, and good for them. Lady C looks very disappointed with this defeat. Sullenly returning once more from whence they came. The Queen's Quest team in defeat. A victory for Oedo Tai this day. In the opening match here at Karakan Hall. Oh, we've got to say pause. Are we going to do it? Three, two, one, pause. Ah, yes. Yeah. Second match. Now we're officially in five-star tournament range. Here's the scores. A nice brief look. Hazuki way out in front on 14. Saya Kamantani... On 12, and Julia on 11, that's our three front runners in the blue block. There is also a red block, and the winner of each block will face each other. Here comes Hanan, who presently sits on zero points, also known as Paddy Last. <laughs> Good luck, Hanan. She's going to be going for some points. You've got to get on the board. You've got to get on the board in tournaments like this. The shame of zero, as was suffered by Star Boom in the old tag league, but we won't uh, we won't speak of that. That was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. I was still having flashbacks. Hanan is, of course, the sister, the elder sister, I should say, of Rina and Hina from our opening contest. All three of the Hanan sisters, as they are sometimes called, in quick succession here, early on in this show. And I'm still quite invigorated from that last match, actually. Oh, here comes Hanan's opponent, a very dangerous one. Currently sitting on eight points. The high-speed fairy, Natsupoi. And really one of, the more, uh, one of the more enchanting wrestlers I would dare mention, as a matter of fact. Beautiful, fast-paced style. As you will see, I am sure. Unless Hanan strikes her down in the opening moments, which I would not lay money on. Not at this stage. Look at the crowd with their phones at the ready. Snaps are about to happen. There she is. One half of the tag team champions, Natsupoi. Her tag team partner is, of course, Tam Nakano, who we shall be seeing later. Fairy spin. Ascend to the ring, young lady. There she goes. There's Tam with the long hair. And Waka, redoubtable, adorable Waka. Hand maidening, as I often call it. Holding the ropes open for their companion. Beautiful flip. I always get a little bit nervous every time she does it. But, you know, she's a professional. I think we can trust her. Natsupoi. Of the Cosmic Angels faction. Which is surely the finest of factions. I don't know how you feel, but I know how I feel, and I'm going to say it. Alright, prepare. Looking for foreign objects, untoward things hidden in glove, wristband or boot. 
is our referee. This is Daichi Muriyama, by the way, the veteran, the most veteran referee here in stardom. Oh, tentative shaking of the hands. All right. It's going to be an honest contest. Hanan's got to get those points. Oh, she wants it. Vicious immediate. Early strike. Oh, drop kick parried. That's bad news. Natsupoi has the advantage. Sure, Hanan all of a sudden, the judo, the judo background. All three Hanan sisters, veterans of judo. Excellent sport, excellent skills, translates beautifully into professional wrestling, I have to say. Oh, Hanan. Calling for support from the crowd, getting the blood flowing. Oh, it's too early. It's too early for that sort of thing. Nuts of poise, she's right there. It's too early for the big throws. Both of them trying for it early. Well, you suppose you've got to try. You're out there. You've got to go for it. You want the points, you've got to win. Oh. Massive drop kick to the face. You might as well pose after that one. That deserves a little bit of hot dogging. Hanan's not going to recover for a while. You'll be fine. She won't succumb to a pin. Mind you. You've got to work on her still. But there's time for a bit of the catching of the breath. The posing has to be done. Oh, merciless. Merciless. Drop kick to the side of the head. Oh, she's going for more. She's going for more stuff. I don't know what it's going to be. It's going to be something lethal from the top rope. Slightly risky. Hanan's rising to her feet. Oh, a high crossbody. And a pin. But that's not going to get through. It's too early. That's Hanan's got too much spice left. Too much vigor. Oh, watch out. Hanan's still sharp. Took a couple of solid blows to the head, but she's still sharp. Door and arm bar. Has Natsupoi blocked it? I can't quite see. Oh, she hasn't. There she goes. Fingers are interlocked. That's blocked. That is one blocked arm bar. And barring a miracle, I don't think Hanan's going to be able to, to pull that, that arm to full extension. Oh, she did! She did it immediately as soon as I doubted her. I was a fool. I should never have. I believe in you, Hanan. Get the points. Oh, it's not going to happen from that move. <laughs> Nuts boy made it to the ropes. How dare I doubt her? What a fool I was. She showed me. Look at that bridge. Not too bad. Solid bridge. One of the most reliable pinning maneuvers you could ever hope to do. The crowd's behind her. Hanan wants points. She deserves them. You don't want to be on zero at the end of the tournament, which isn't that far off, I dare say. You know, I, I, I might add that we aren't that far from the end. Ooh, are we going to have another contest of strikes? Mm, you bet we are. Now it's a boy felt that one. Hanan felt that one. Staggered far more than Natsupoi was. Oh, the adrenaline's kicking in. The rhythm has been found. The battle of the forearms. Hanan has the advantage. Oh, Natsupoi down to one knee. It's a good performance. Oh, midsection kick. Oh, a cutie special. 10 out of 10. It doesn't get the win. Cutie special, of course, one of my favorite moves. Innovated by the great cutie Suzuki. Oh, a famous. Uh, this is some big stuff. Hanan mean, means business. Her hair is loose like the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. The tourists are in trouble. And so are the lawyers. Oh no, we're not having it. Nay to suplex. That's not too bad. Oh, that's a point floated over. No! Oh. I was worried for Hanan there. There's serious edge of seat pinnery that was. Oh, gorgeous German 
absolutely beautiful release at the end and drifts back up like a fairy. Just absolutely magnificent move by Natsupoi. Seldom seen elsewhere, I should say, other than her general vicinity. <laughs> she missed from the top big risk big risky stuff Oy, five minutes passed already according to Ando the announcer who does a great job I might add not suppose was in real trouble there she got out of it oh cradle it's a rolling cradle it's going nope it's over Hanan escaped that looks pinned Oh, close enough. The Romulan was mere inches. Mere inches. And the, the hand speed inches doesn't mean anything. That's microseconds. The holy moly. It was about to go into a tirade about the fabric of time. And Anand took a, a blow to the head that would have floored me in my prime. Which I am in, I dare say. I'd like to reiterate. Holy smokes. Beautiful spinning kick to the jaw. That's a pin. That's... That's it. Hanana's toast. I wouldn't have been able to get up from that either. Now that's not the Romulan, that's Daichi. <laughs> I'm still having visions of the Romulan. What a fool. Uh, that's fine. Spinning kick, the, the move is named by our title graphics there. Which is good, I didn't know if that had a unique name. <laughs> I do not have, have all reaching wrestling knowledge, but I'm here nonetheless. Hanan already has a bag of stones, as I call them, on her jaw. It's actually a, 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 a cold, a bag of cold stones. Uh, but let's leave that off. Let's leave that to the side. She's got to recover immediately. Natsupoi picking up points. I didn't put her on 10 points. Actually, a very respectable score for this stage of the game. For this stage of the tournament. Very respectable. Ah, the updated scores have appeared. Natsupoi on 10, tied with Mirai and Ami Sore. Just behind the three front runners. We don't know how it's all going to play out, though. Anything could happen. All sorts of things could happen. You don't know what's going to happen. Sorry, Daichi, I called you the Romulan. He can't hear me, but, you know, the spirit. Oh, it's over. Just as Yuzuki Watase was getting in the ring. All right, we've got to pause again. Three, two, one, pause. Yo-ho, match number three here and the second of the five-star Grand Prix matches on this particular show. This one is going to feature the beautiful Mina Shirakawa versus Ami Sorei, who I have seen only a bare handful of times. Look, I have to confess. And here she comes, Sorei coming out first. About to emerge... Joe, there she is. And she's doing particularly well, actually, here in the in this side of the tournament. Ten points she's on. Doing great. You know? Rallying the support of the crowd, who I'm all too happy to oblige. Man, I really need to catch up on some Sore. I've I've missed virtually all of her performances here in these this uh, this this tournament. To my deepest shame. She's a member of the God's Eye faction. The newest of the factions in stardom. And the champion faction at the moment. By virtue of uh, World of Stardom champion Shuri being its leader and founder. And here comes Mina Shirakawa. There she is, bubbly as ever, effervescent, a little pre-match gyration, as is tradition with her, as we might expect from a gravure idol. Is it gravure? Or is it, is it gravure? I think I like gravure better. Gravure is good enough for Thorgrim Grudge Bearer. It's good enough for me. Mina's only on four points in the tournament so far, so not doing particularly well. I'm sure she wants more. She may get more. It all depends. She's a member of Cosmic Angels who are here in full support. Great solidarity in that faction. 
Although who knows, I, maybe there's some cracks underneath the surface. It, it's not always quite clear what lurks beneath the veneer. But it's not my place to cast dispersions upon anybody. Least of all Mina Shirakawa. Oh, an electric sliding knee pose, as is tradition. Ami Sore looking on with maybe a little bit of disdain there. It's a little hard to tell. Maybe a little touch of disdain. All right, Daichi Muriyama, still with us, veteran referee Daichi. Make sure there's no untoward objects hidden, everything's in order. I'm expecting quite a good match here. Let's see how we start off. This is, should dictate the pace of the whole match, the way we start. No one's going straight in. A little circling. Oh, and a flick of the hair from Mina. From Why not? Sore's looking for the initiative early with a headlock. It's not going to hold, though. Mina shooting us straight off. All right, what do we got? Oh, oh, okay, that's a highly committal move to go for so soon. It was only a glancing blow there to the knee. I think Sore avoided most of that drop kick. Now she's answering back with some chops, forcing Mina back into the corner, looks like. Yes, machine gun chops. Absolutely devastating. If you hit me with even one of those, I would be pinned for the rest of time. All of my titles would be in dire jeopardy. Except that never happens. Oh, beautiful lariat. What's next? Mina's looking a little rattled. Oh, forward flip and everything. Beautiful stuff and a pin. Confident at this stage. Showing Mina that she's ready to, to take advantage at any point. Oh, Mina's out. A little pin. I don't expect that to be conclusive. Oh, oh! She nailed it that time. That was a that was that uh, committal drop kick come to full fruition from earlier. That was on target. Look at Army favouring that knee. Although oh, Mina's got a hold of that leg again, that could be bad. This could be Mina's plan. Yeah, she's twisting that knee. That's that's rough. This is bad for Ami. I don't know if Sore has a a weakness, maybe? Does she have a vulnerability? Is one of her knees bad? That, that could be the case. I'm afraid that's beyond my, admittedly, you know, medium quality uh, wrestling lore knowledge at this current stage. A little bit of direct damage now from Mina. Straight onto the knee. I think her plan is really starting to crystallise. Oh, again... Oh, not quite. Mina's going for it again. Yep. Mm -hmm. Driving that knee into the canvas. No measure of comfort for Sore at all. She's uh, she might be out there with a the bad leg for this whole match. That's what figure four. A little bit of an unorthodox application of the figure four, as <laughs> as Mina has done. But now Sore is really in dire straits. This is a killer move. After you've weakened one of the knees, that left knee of uh, of Sore is taking all of that pressure. It's just being leveraged straight down on it. Her own leg leveraged on, as is the nature of the figure four. And of course, having a bad knee makes it harder to reverse this move. She's scooching to the ropes. Yeah, that's her best chance making it to the ropes with a, by a good margin. It's actually worth uh, mentioning of our referee here, Daichi Muriyama, is he won't call for a break of a hold. If it's just the fingertips or just the toes on the rope, he, he favours getting the, the wrist or the ankle over. That's his nature, and these wrestlers will know this. He's senior referee here. I mean, it demands a response and gets one. <laughs> Might regret that. She may be regretting it. Straight back to the knee. Oh, he's pronounced limp. 
Mina's offering another chop. She takes it. She's staggered, but she takes it and delivers another, well, several strikes to the... This is not a good trade for Sore. This is bad. Like, don't get in that trade. Don't accept those chops in trade for strikes to the knee. It, it's obviously killing her out there. But she's going for a pin nonetheless. And converts it into a... No, look. I would be surprised if she could really cinch this in. That's... I don't think her knee can, can stand up. See, she's... She's giving a lot of ground to Mina, who is, is even, despite being right in the centre of the ring, is making progress to the ropes already. I don't think this hold is, is going to stick. She's she's nearly there. Sore just can't hold her. I'm going to say it's the knee. It, it's Yeah, there's a, a lot of tenderness on that knee region. Mina's gone to work on it. She's going to have to protect it as Sore. It's a... Uh, Gonna be a significant handicap if she can't do something about this. She might have a plan here if she can just get uh, get the advantage on Mina, get a little bit of the initiative, get some momentum in her favour. She should be able to 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 protect her knee and give give Mina some problems that she's got to worry about more than than offence. Oh, might have been a Sumerian backbreaker there, a torture rack as they are known. Made famous by Ralph Moella in the PAWA. One of my favourite moves, the Sumerian backbreaker. Oh, the knee again. Another fully committal, very low angle dropkick right to Sore's knee. That smarts and she's hurting quite badly out there. Mina's got a lot of support. She's got all of the cosmic angels out there. Pounding on the mat. Well, maybe not all of them. Unagi Sayaka was and Natsupoi was. Another strike to the back of Sore's knee. She's in a very vulnerable position here. Like Mina's controlling that wrist. Sore can't go anywhere. No. And she's down. Devastating hit to the back of the knee again. I would anticipate another figure four. It is! Immediately! That knee is in even worse condition. It, Sore's in no spot to turn this over and reverse the move on Mina. As wrestling law dictates, if you can turn a figure four over, all of the agony, all of the pain funnels back into the originator of the move. In a, a, a brilliant display of wrestling physics. And I'm not going to dispute it. It's, it's received wisdom for all time, as far as I'm concerned. She's close enough to the rope. She's there by a good margin. Daichi's breaking that hold. Mina does break it. I I was maybe expecting a little bit of a resistance out of Mina. She's been she's been vicious out there, as is her nature. You know, she might be quite bubbly, she's quite cute. But she has a savage side. A little wink there as she goes in for Oh, I was expecting another devastating knee maneuver. She went for a rolling elbow to the back of the head. Now a draping DDT, perhaps it is. That's no good. Maybe a little bit of mind games on Sore there. You expect a knee assault and you get something else. Classic mix-ups. Mina's trying to get her up. Sore's resisting with all of her might, letting all of her weight... Just... Just weigh... Oh, devastating back fist... Mina gave up on that move. Sore was just resisting, letting herself go limp. Oh, what has she got? Beautiful move. A slam out of a fireman's carry. I'm sure that's got a correct name. But I don't know it. Or maybe I do, and it's just slipped from my mental archives for the time being. Who knows what's happening? <laughs> Sore's needing the ropes to stand up. Evidence of that knee being just racked with pain. Each wrestler's in a corner. Oh, a lariat in the center. Mina had nothing coming out of there. I don't know what she wanted, but she didn't get it. And a bomb. 
Mina very heavily slammed down. But a little convulsion saves her from the three. Sore's getting some momentum back. As long as that knee doesn't give out, it's still giving her a lot of trouble, as you can see. She's, she's, she's favoring it heavily. Her hand is never far away from it. This is the time. If you're going to do it, now's the time. You've got to do it now. Oh, Mina's getting out. Sore's in the... No, I thought she was going... Oh, another terrifying dropkick to the vulnerable left knee of Ami Sore. This is a really devastating situation. She's got to get to those ropes to get up. You don't need that kind of handicap. Oh, look at Mina. The vicious expression on her face. Straight to the knee. Sweeping, scything kick. It wounds on a 2-plus, probably, in this scenario. For a little bit of Warhammer parlance, another figure four. This is murder. Sore is hanging on. I would have given up right now. I can only imagine the pain that knee is in. After all of those strikes, the full-powered, low-angle drop kicks it's taken. Two previous figure fours. Daichi's there. You can't put your shoulders down when you're in this position. He was counting for a, uh, a pin there. If Sore's shoulders go down, that is a pin. Her hand is on the referee. You're not supposed to do that, technically. Mina's bridging. That is it. It's a banshee screech of Mina. Giving extra vigor to the bridge and the figure four. Sore just had to tap. She had to get out of there. That She had no choice. That was... A well-wrestled match out of Mina. The plan, she had the plan. She went in with the plan. It came together. <laughs> she looks, She has an expression of glee on her face that reminds me of a, a goblin who just found a mushroom. Well, don't tell her I said that. She, she might take exception. I don't mean it in an exceptional way. But oh, Tamu, that faction leader of Cosmic Angels, overjoyed that her teammate is one. <laughs> a wild and vigorous embrace in the middle of the ring. Now Mina, apparently, meaning no real ill will, is checking on Ami Sore. Eh? Bit of sportsmanship there. Don't know if it'll be reciprocated, though. If I was on the receiving end of a, a knee assault like that for so long, I'd be mad about it. Yeah, no, she wants no part. And there's a bag of stones being wedged in right against that knee. There's Suri, our champion. They're looking after her injured, fallen teammate. Mina looks elated. The figure four leg lock did it for her on the third, on the third go round. The hair is flailing. Those bows are sending it all over the place. Just ten out of ten. I mean, it's on six points. Respectable. Ami Sore, unfortunately for her, not able to bolster her uh, her collection of points there. She's still going to be on 10. She's going to have to work pretty hard to win this. If, if that is her destiny, that's... I don't know how many more matches she's got left in this tournament, I have to confess. And oh, it's over just as Yuzuki's getting in the ring. Is that, is that her name? Is that Yuzuki? I don't even know. You know, someone pass me some notes. Uh, look, sorry, we've got to pause. Here we go. Three, two, one, pause. Ah, yes, we are back, and it's the Battle of the Sakis. At last, we're in the red block. And this is a battle between Saki, in capital letters, and Saki Kashima coming out now. Here's the, the Red Stars rankings at the moment. Look at Azumi. On 12, tied with Himeka in the lead. Azumi, I'm very proud of Azumi, having watched her since she was a mere stripling thief back in the elder times. She's developed into what I must call ace material. But she's, she'll appear later, never mind that. I think. I don't know, I don't remember what the card is. This is Saki Kashima of Oero Tai. One of my personal favourites. And was, at the beginning of this tournament, my strong pick for the red block. It doesn't look like it's to be. Saki needs points, basically, but... What an elegant pose. 
Saki Kashima. A 10 out of 10 wrestler besides. Sorry if you can hear my chair, but there's a little creaky in here. And here comes Saki in capital letters. One name only for Saki. One name, but many belts, as you'll see. Oh, yes. As you've no doubt noticed, it's a tradition to wait until the most dramatic point in the music before you actually come out. Proper build-up is essential. Oh, there she is, a riot of colour. Plush from head to foot, or at least across the jackets. That head to foot, covered in the furs of wild meridian beast. Meridian beast? Where did I get... Look, never mind. We'll ignore my notes for the moment. Bedecked in belts, no less than three. And I know you can only see two, but that fuzzy plush little lion head under her arm is indeed a belt. And quite a high one, what's more. Saki here comes from Colors. An outside unit from Stardom. Currently allied to the Cosmic Angels. This should be a 10 out of 10 bout. Saki has to disrobe and debelt. A little bit of a procedure. Yeah, that's what a champion looks like, you know, bedecked in belts. Plush or otherwise. The Romulan is back. Excellent. That's a good omen. Saki's quietly confident. Saki Kashima, that is. That's going to be a problem. I'll have to call her Kashima henceforth, maybe. Let's see if I can keep it up. Oh, no clapping. Oh, an offer of the hand. I would not take it. Da treachery immediately, as predicted. That was basically written in stone in Babylonian times, frankly. Mm, might have been an early mistake there. No! Oh, oh, oh and our tie! Shenanigans are starting to go down. I called them the criminal faction. I stand by this. The trademark tub of Ruaka. It's about to come into play, I believe. Devastating effect, as you can see. Saki Kashima here. A master at referee distraction, as you can see. Just grab them by the shoulders, turn them around and push them into the corner. Oh, devastating plastic tub. I would not wish to get struck with such a thing, or any other thing. I do not ask to be struck. I just want to make that clear. I think the referee's cottoned on. The Romulan, his keen senses have, have noticed some shenanigans. No, he's pointed the other way still. As is tradition... As I said, Saki Kashima is a master at referee distraction. Second only, perhaps, to Antonio Honda. And there she is, taking every advantage. Saki Kashima is a personal favourite of mine, as is capital letters Saki, though I do lean more toward Kashima. She's taking full advantage of the distraction, of the shenanigans, the little bit of a swindle that went down. Now she's in a commanding position. She has command of the ear of capital letters, Saki. Mm hmm. Not too damaging, this hold, I dare say. <laughs> a hold of inconvenience, I would call it. Nonetheless, a bit of scooching is happening. Actually, that shoulder doesn't look like it's in too good of a position. They may be wrong. I thought it was more of an insult, but... Oh, look at the contortion Saki has to do to get to the rope! 
Well counted there by the Romulan. Saki's looking a little disheveled. <laughs> These boots to the face aren't helping. Saki Kashima still fully composed. Well, maybe not now. Oh. That Irish whip was going somewhere, straight back into the corner from whence it came, as is so often the case. Oh. Oh, my good gravy, straight into a pin. Oh, beautiful, beautiful head scissors. Beautiful stuff. Saki Kashima has mastered that move. Mm. That's nuts a boy calling for Saki on the outside, shouting some encouragement. Oh, watch out, Romulan. Protect that midsection. A dragon punch from Saki. Excellent move. An excellent move. She's been dipping into the fighting game lore. She knows there's invincibility frames on a dragon punch. Frame one in vulnerability. Especially when the referee is in the way. Oh, that was never going to hit. She must have seen it the last minute. And went a little bit further for a roll through on purpose. Nonetheless, she's getting the worst of this. Oh, magical suplex. Devastating. Oh, Saki might have made a mistake getting up that quick. Saki Kashima, that is. But no, I was wrong. I was wrong. She went straight into a boot to the face, reclaiming the advantage for herself. No way. Oh, suplexed again. She's been stunned. Looks like she was going to get to the outside there, but she didn't get far enough before taking a blow to the back of the head. Saki's dragging herself to her feet. Oh, pump handle. No, no. Oh, roll up. Kashima. Sneaky Saki Kashima. And she does also have the Kishikaise, the deadliest, swiftest surprise pin move you could ever wish for. That could happen at any moment, actually. It's worth mentioning. You won't see it coming and you won't know it's happening, but boy, holy, you'll know when it's happened. It's fast. <laughs> it's ended many a match at the blink of an eye. Oh, just a devastating turning suplex. I don't know about this. No, oh, that's it. Saki has been cast to the winds. Kashima, that is. That's a problem. These intra-Saki matches. Oh, Kashima getting a, a blast of the cold spray there from Rina. That was a decisive win for Saki. Decisive, as a matter of fact. Decisive loss for Saki Kashima. I'm sorry to say. The shenanigans didn't pay off ultimately. What's this? Oh, an extended hand. I wouldn't have expected such. And rebuffed, as as expected by Saki Kashima. Oedo Tai does not shake unless it's a trap. The Kawild Buster, that's what it's called. I didn't know that. This is a poorly researched <laughs> commentary. <laughs> ah, that's normal. That's normal. For many months now, I haven't been able to catch up fully on my stardom. I'm still well behind. I haven't seen barely enough of some of these top-level talent they've got these days. Oh, the match is over. We've got to pause. Three, two, one, pause. Oh, and unto this, 
A match of kings. Hazuki versus Saya Ida. Hazuki's on 14 points. Saya Ida's on two. That's a long way from winning. In fact, it's impossible to win. But this isn't about the points. This is a different kind of match. There's more weight to this than mere points, mere tournaments. For this has the air of master versus apprentice. And here comes Saya Ida. Oh, what a physique. Look at the muscularity. I've been watching Ida since her debut. She's one of the wrestlers that I'm always, always behind. Unless she's up against Starlight Kid or something like that. You know, there's extenuating circumstances. But almost always, I'm behind Saya Ida. The power, the strength. Of course, the skill instilled in part, at least, by Hazuki, her opponent today. Alongside the legendary Kagetsu. Ultra high caliber trainers. Macho Gorisan. Every inch the power wrestler. But she's going up against Hazuki. Who is running away with the block, or more or less. But never mind that. Hazuki trained Ida Saya in the days before and around her debut. She was a key influence. So this is going to be a scintillating and interesting matchup, I am sure. Here comes Hazuki. And don't mind if I call her husky now and then due to ancient habit. It's just how it might be. What a dramatic delay. There she is, Hazuki. Went on a bit of a hiatus not that long ago, but returned in fine form. And Ida's got her own parallel to that, actually, having an injury not that long ago and having to go on a bit of a, a recuperation. But she's back. This match should be brilliant. I have full faith in it. Once upon a time, Hazuki was a key member of Oerotai, and before that, a key member of Queen's Quest. She's had a storied career, that's a fact. Now let's see what goes. There's our man, Duxado, the Romulan. Ahead of the bell, or the gong, as it is sometimes called. There we go, okay. No immediate lockups, no fiery starts. A little circling, a little caging. A little caginess would be a better way of saying that. Oh, there we go, lockup. The strength of Ida Sire should be, should give her an advantage. Low center of gravity, great physical strength pushing Hazuki back. Almost effortlessly, but Hazuki's got a reversal there. There's a little turnaround. A nice separation. Oh, Hazuki does not go down. Ida charges a second time. Oh, she remains standing. Hazuki's got it. Hazuki has the experience to counter this sort of thing. Uh, your turn. Your turn, says Ida. Oh, smote. Smote. A little bit of trickery. Oh, the power. That's a fine bit of strength. An early pin. It's not going to win. Ida's just letting Hazuki know that she's there. And she means it. A win for Ida would be a... Really important. These banishing chops. Hazuki's trapped by the wrist. Oh, the double chop. Smote to the mat. Oh, Hazuki is feeling that. <laughs> oh, not wanting any more. Got to take the initiative. Go for the hair. The drop kick. Now oh, Ida's rattled. Are we going to see a Husky special? It can happen. There she goes. Ah, for good measure. 
Nice. Nice way to, to, to reclaim the momentum. Azuki's got some power of her own, evidently. Oh, missed the senton. Oh, look at that. The full body weight of Saya Ida. Are we going to get a Northern Lights? Not to be. Hazuki has a killer brain buster. Ida's going to have to watch out for that. It could happen. Keep our eyes open. Oh, the forearm. We're going to have a forearm duel. It could happen. No, holy moly. Look at the expression on Ida's face after taking that shot. Straight down. <laughs> she seems to be still with us, though. On her feet, resuming the, the forearm duel. No longer so rattled by these strikes. Back and forth. Who's going to get the better of it? Ida staggered a little there. She's got serious advantages, but the serious skill and serious experience in the form of Hazuki. Who could do with those two points? Extend that lead. But it's not going to be easy by the looks of things. Has she trained Ida too well? Is she going to regret it? And they're in the same faction. They probably train together all the time. How do you keep secret strategies in a situation like that? What do you keep in reserve? How do you practice it? Oh, beautiful full Nelson slam on the part of Hazuki. Oh, and a sent on. Oh, brilliant move. You see that? That pin existed to get Ida to kick out and fall into this trap. The motion of kicking out put her in exactly the right position for this crossface. Hazuki loves it. Ida's in a terrible position. She has a ton of scooching to do to get within a billion light years of the rope although she is making it you know i'm saying that and she's well on her way she's not there yet though the romulan will be looking on keenly no doubt she's there she's well there way there break that hold there was a time i'm sure in the oedo tai days when hazuki would not have broken a hold like that without the full count of four although i may have to look at the archives to confirm this which i may not do Azuki's going up to the top. Ida's on her feet, though. An interception and a headbutt. Brilliant move. Jumping headbutt. What are we going to get from the top? Does Ida have a brain bust? No, a power slam from the top. Azuki looks like she can't believe it. Her ghost is 10 miles north. No, she's well alive. It was a little bit of an extravagant call from me. <laughs> the spirit is still within her body. Although at the rate she's getting battered at the moment, I don't know. The northern lights out of Ida. Beautiful move. Hazuki pinned. Mm hmm. It took serious fortitude to kick out of that. Ida's headed to the top. What has she got from up there? Hazuki's rolling toward it. Might be ill advised, Hazuki. Ida's ready for battle. A salute. A oh, shoulder block from the top. Hazuki accordioned over completely. That pin was certain. The count was not certain, though. Only a two for Ida there. Can she overcome her trainer of Eld? I believe it's possible. That... Oh, look at this. Oh, Hus reversed it into a DDT. I was just about to admire the strength, the, the the lifting of the... Oh, look at that boot. The delayed vertical suplex. Hazuki. No, oh, I thought she was going to go for the brain buster there. That would have ended the match almost certainly. With the grim inevitability of death, the brain buster would end this match. It's a lethal move. Oh, what's this? A husky buster in the corner. Beautiful stuff. You would call it a code breaker, I guess. 
In ancient times, we called it a husky buster. Round the campfire in the days of my youth, my father, steel in hand, told me of the legendary move, the husky buster. Oh, here we go. This No, I thought it was going to be a brain buster. If she goes for the brain buster, she's in serious threat. This is it. Look at this. Husky's brain buster is not a move done lightly. Oh, straight up. Hold her there for a dramatic amount of time. That's how you... Oh, she's down! Ida using the, the weight to her advantage. Oh my god, a cauldron! Husky's in deep trouble! Kick out! It's not actually called... It's a... It's, what, another one? A second cauldron to win? No! It is! Ah, yeah. <laughs> it's actually called an Ida Bashi. No one's ready for two cauldrons! I'm sure Dark Elf players across the realm can attest to this. <laughs> can you have two cauldrons? Maybe it depends on the addition. What a match! That was first rate. The strength of both wrestlers fully on display. Ida pulling it out with a, a second cauldron, a second Ida Bashi. I'm sorry, I'm probably going to just keep calling it the cauldron because that's what it is to me. In the ancient times. <laughs> Aha. Is that a, a hint of pride on Hazuki's face? I dare say it is. The student has risen to the occasion. I'm not certain if they've had other singles matches. They may well have done. I may well have missed them while I was not in full stardom cycle. The Idabashi there. <laughs> a well-deserved win four points four points now for Ida Sire well-deserved but more importantly she has overcome her old trainer look at that the points don't matter get that score sheet out of here there's Hanan to, to bear Ida victoriously to the back turning around for a final bow what a great performance. What a great match. That was as good as you can get with these 15-minute tournament time limits. Or am I about to be proven wrong? Are they going to get better? Perhaps. But we've got we've to gotta pause once more. Three, two, one, pause. All right, we return to the red stars block for what should be a cracking match. We're about to see my Sakurai take on Utami Hayashishta. And I haven't seen that much of my Sakurai, I have to admit. Here she is. See, in the most recent months, I've only been able to watch selected matches. I had to be selective. But now my free time sort of opened up a lot more. I'm catching up and I'm recording a commentary to share with you fine folk out there. Strictly amateur hour, but that's all right. Mm hmm. A member of Donna del Mondo. That's Julia's faction. We're about to see the leader of Queen's Quest, former champion, former world of stardom champion, I should say, Utami Hayashishta. That's some wild harpsichord in the, the theme music there. I think it's harpsichord. Well, it's probably digital, but whatever. Oh, there she is. She has a commanding presence. She bears the rose and always bestows it on some lucky and no doubt beautiful young woman in the crowd. Utami is a great wrestler. I have no hesitation in saying this. She has proven herself to me. Her career has been relatively short. 
but she has mastered the art of professional wrestling to a degree that some never achieve in their entire career. Belt or no belt, she'll always be a champion in my eyes. All right, the Romulan. But still with the Romulan. That's a good omen. Oh, what is this surprise gift? Utami is positively thrilled. This better not be a shenanigan. Please be genuine. We're a fan of, of romantic gestures such as this. Oh, technically that's fair. That was a complete acceptance of the gift before the surprise attack. The surprise attack was a separate, disconnected action. My Sakurai is going up a few notches in my rankings, personally, for that very knightly maneuver. Perfectly lawful. Whether it was good or not is a debate for the ages. And I would argue... That if you're in the ring with someone of the caliber of, of Utami Hayashishta, you take whatever advantages you can get. It seems to be amounting to basically nothing at the moment. Utami taking an advantage quite commandingly. And a kick for good measure. Why not? Oi! Beautiful, close, very close, high boot to the face. A fulcrum. It levered Utami straight to the floor, which led to the present situation. We have an STF. Utami's quite hooked in by this, but I don't think she's in particular danger. She's quite close to the ropes. Just a little bit of scooching, she's going to be there. Although she might be blinded. She might not be... She might not know exactly where she is, although she certainly senses. The referees do quite often alert wrestlers to the proximity of the ropes. So you're not completely senseless out there when you're in a hold such as that. Magnificent drop kick out of Utami. Oh, she's lining my up here. Sakurai taking that back elbow. Dazed, dizzy. Oh, drop kicks blown back. Pretty significant distance. The classic sleeper hold. One of the true, like, classic moves of all wrestling. The ropes are right there, though. My Sakurai seems to have advantageous limbs for reaching the ropes. Ain't good for her, frankly. Utami with a waist lock. Some elbows. By the way she turned her head, Utami knew that was a real possibility. Oh! Very good. Sakurai's she's looking like a real threat. Yeah, she could take this. What she got from the top. Oh, an elbow. Beautiful diving elbow. Mmm. Beautiful positioning. I don't want to call it unorthodox, but it's slightly unusual uh, positioning of the elbow. Parallel to the opponent. Some wrestlers do that. I think it's a particularly aesthetic way to do a, an elbow drop from the top. There's that boot again. Oh, it only gave Utami momentum. Utami came back and bowled her straight over. I think I'm going to sneeze. This could be bad. Ah, excuse me. <laughs> Look out. Straight down. The dreaded air raid crash. 
Oh, sh surprise, Pen! It surprised me. It was half over before there was even a kick out. So I... Oh, the Sumerian backbreaker immediately converted out of, sadly. And a German suplex with a beautiful bridge. No surprise. No surprise that that pinned. That is a real... The hair has come out. The weave. By the weave. The winds of magic are blowing in this arena. A German suplex, but not just a German suplex, but they get rid of that weave. It's out of here. <laughs> the extensions are bailing on Utami. Your closest friends are leaving you. Take that, Rose. Keep it, though. It was given in honour. I wouldn't return it. It's... No, oh, just see that? That's not right. That was an earnest gift. So what if there was an ambush afterwards? That is a separate action. These two things cannot be linked. That's a waste of a good rose. You know? Utami is now on 10 points and good for her. Within striking range of our two front runners, Azumi and Himeka. Although... I'm not sure how much of this tournament is actually left. That's how discombobulated I am from this whole thing. No, oh, time to pause. Three, two, one, pause. All right, buckle up. We're about to see the champion in action. As Momo Kogo takes on Suri, reigning world of stardom champion. Of course, the champion's not going to come out first. That falls to Momo Kogo, who really has impressed me in the, the handful of times I've seen her. At first, I was ambivalent, but no, she won me over, sure enough. Look at this hot-blooded, or listen to this hot-blooded fighting music. Momo Kogo of Stars about to face off against Suri, the leader of the God's Eye faction. And one of the most formidable wrestlers you could ever hope to see. Ah, the rhythm. Got to await the correct moment to come out. There's a right time and a wrong time. And the wrong time is every other time than this. There she is. Bedecked in a hooded gold jacket. <laughs> With cape-like affectation, it looked like. Turn around slightly, Siri, please. Bearing the red belt... The highest belt in stardom. Historically, there's been some debate between red and white, whether the white belt may in fact be higher, but I have always stood by the red belt. I've always held it to be the highest of belts. It has historically been in my experience, at least. Talk about a high-level opponent for, for Momo Kogo. The champion. It's also a great honor. Tournaments of the time, when you almost, by virtue, are going to be pitted against some of the top, top wrestlers in the roster. And you want to do well against them. Even if you don't win, you want to, you want to show your, your quality, so to speak. Or oh, a handshake offered. Traditional move. This should go off without a hitch. There's not a lot of trickery in either of these two. The Romulan, a nod of approval. 
Oh, intermediate. That's perfectly fine. The separation was fully clean. Oh, Shuri's bringing her down. Solid headlock. Not holding it too strongly, though. She may want to see what Momo's got here. That waist lock is a commanding position to fight for. Oh, Momo swept off, off her feet. She blocked that good stuff out of Momo. That, um, that arm bar, if it had gone through, if she didn't block it like this, would probably have ended the match immediately, I'd have to say. Oh, there it is. She's completely toast. The ropes are there. She knows it. Yes, she's in. That's all right. Shuri breaks immediately, doesn't doesn't hang on for the full four seconds, as some do. It's a valid and perfectly legal thing to do, but... You have a count of five to break a hold when one must be broken. Ooh. It's kind of a casual pin. I would expect a kick out there. Yep. Oh, avoided! Choosing to go for the drop kick rather than a pin. Taking a stomp for a trouble. Another one. Very aggressive. This is like a test of character almost. Stand up. What follows? Oh, I felt that myself. Look at the face of Momo Kogo. That was a very, very hard hit. Oh, quickness, snake-like sweep. Beautiful move. Oh, a stomp. Posing, getting a, a metal. Oh, no. No 619 for you. Blocked. What is this going to turn into? A sidewalk slam, as well it might. Momo still in it, though. Oh, again for the armbar. That's a tentative block. It's going to break any second now. She's going for the other arm. That is high-level wrestling technique. Oh. Momo's... The ropes are there. She knows it, though. She's there. She's well in. Scream of anguish out of Momo. That must have hurt like hell. All the devils of hell. In one arm. By oh, beautiful suplex. Very fast. Very low as well. The valor, valor of Mo. Now's the time for a six one nine. I see. Clever. She had two traps. She could have fallen into there. And she chose a third way. Now what? Six one nine. The full thing. Bowling the champion backwards. A hopeful pin. Not there yet. Got to build up that spirit. Charge up that meter, as we might say. Oh, Shuri welcomed that. She welcomed that drop kick. Look at that guillotine like hold there. Oh, she crouched. A quick thrust kick. Stunning the champion. Fisherman suplex. That's a top level pinning maneuver. It's not enough at this instance though. 
Five minutes have passed. Ooh, that was well aimed. Right on the cheek. Oh, knees to the midsection. Oh, Suri's ready to finish this. She calls for the end. No, whoa! Momo's spider-like escape. Like a spider crawling out from under a... What do they get under? Help. I don't know. Completely lost the plot. <laughs> yeah, Momo's still got plenty of fortitude left. Oh, there's this, this arm breaker, the arm bar. Rolled over, that's toast. That The ropes aren't near enough this time. Surely they're not. Oh, zzz. Siri's just making sure of it now. She's just, she's not even going to chance it. Both arms tied up. She's way out in the middle of nowhere. She's completely locked. That's it. You ring that bell. That is some excellent wrestling. Excellent positioning. Beautiful stuff. Worth noting that beautiful graphic on the screen back there. The goddess Nike. Oh, the ground Susaku. That's what that's called. I have to remember that. Somebody write that down. I'll write it down. Ground Susaku. 10 out of 10. A commanding performance out of Shuri, as you would expect from the champion, frankly. Holding the belt aloft. Ten points. That's pretty high, I've got to say. It's pretty high. It's not catching Azumi or Himeka, both of whom have had uh, world-class performances in this block, actually. Now. And, uh... <laughs> My video just crashed. Oh no, wait, it's resumed. That's all right. We're so late in the thing, it barely matters. <laughs> what a great match. All right, time to pause once more. Three, two, one, pause. Oh yes, we return to the ring for the red block at a cracking match, I dare say. It's going to be Azumi versus Risa Serra. Azumi on 12 points alongside Himeka at the top of the block. You gotta think she wants to win this with maximum, maximum urgency. She wants to pull out it in front of Himeka, no doubt. Well, good luck to her. Risa Serra is no joke though. She is a serious opponent. It's going to be a bit rough. It's gonna be a tough battle, but we'll see. Risa Serra, of course, on eight points. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. But she's going to want to try and block Azumi all the same. Mm, tremendous atmosphere coming from Risa Serra's entrance music. She's going to be coming out first. What a mood. The prelude to the storm. Here she comes, Risa Serra, looking resplendent. Shimmering on her way to the ring. She is, of course, a, a member of the Prominence Wrestling Group focused on deathmatch wrestling, hardcore wrestling. She's no stranger to violence, as I'm sure we are about to see. And Azumi is a great wrestler. But, ooh, Risa Serra, what a threat. Here comes Azumi. The unmistakable sirens. Is 
She may be confident, though. She's been doing extremely well, has Azumi, in this tournament. She wants these two points. I've been remiss, of course, <laughs> in not mentioning how the points work. You get two for a win, one for a draw, zero for a loss, of course. Oh, there she is. High-speed champion Azumi in her second reign with that magnificent belt. She's quite a, an accomplished wrestler despite her age, only 19. Nonetheless, she has eight or nine years of experience now, debuting at the age of 11. She's very comfortable out there in that ring. It's worth mentioning she's also a former Artist of Stardom champion. Three times, I think, with various partners. That's the, the triple tag titles. And Risa Serra is also bedecked in gold throughout her career. I should not be remiss in, in, in mentioning that. Oh, full entrances. Daichi Muriyama, veteran referee. Yes, holding her belt aloft. As well she should. She is the most veteran member of Queen's Quest, her faction, which is the faction that many hold to be the the signature faction of stardom, going back many, many years. Well before this current era of grand factiondom. Oh, we're about to get going. Uncharacteristic offering of hands, maybe? A bow? What have we got? Be careful. No! You little trickster. The honest handshake. It's as rare as a sensible elf. And you know I mean that. I don't disparage the elves lightly. Ooh. Azumi's taking an early advantage. Reese is blocking her as well as she should. There's close to a 10 year difference in age between these two, but their experience in the ring is comparable. Oh, hip toss denied. Hip toss, arm drag, I should say. Arm drag denied. Watch out. Azumi's not high speed champion for nothing. Oh, no way. No Frankensteiner for you. Oh, a giant swing. It's happening immediately. Daichi's up on the ropes. He doesn't want to get within five yards of this. And who would? That's very perilous. Oh, the tornado has struck. Azumi is going to be fully discombobulated. So is Risa Serra. The peril of that move, of course. Discombobulates both wrestlers. In theory, the one on the receiving end should have it worse off. And it seems that that is the case here. Reese's back to her feet. A little bit of pep, a little bit of spice is returning to Risa Serra. Oh, yes. Double knees. What has she got from the top? Oh, not quite. Get all. Azumi intercept straight in. No, oh, she's blocked it. Blocking that armbar as well. She should. That is a needful thing, a reflex that is drilled into professional wrestlers. Oh, Azumi. She's in the ropes. Risa made it. The ropes were right there. All right, steady now. Oh, are we about to see another duel? One seems to be starting up a forearm duel. Oh, that was high. That was awfully high. Well placed by Azumi. A little less effective than Risa's, though. Risa's... Just powering Azumi back with those shots. 
Azumi coming in rapid fire. Taking the initiative here. Risa's not too rattled, though. Oh, no. She shakes her finger. Right, in, right across the jawline. Oh, that final one. Rocking Azumi. Beware the Azumi Sushi, Risa. That could happen at any time. Very fast, very dangerous roll-up. Perfected by Azumi over the years. Mm-hmm. Confident kick out there, or power out, I should say. Not a lot of kick. A lot of upper body twist to get out of that, that pin. Are we about to see the Weeping Blades? This is one of, one of Azumi's signature moves. I don't know what she actually calls it, but... That's it. That's the Weeping Blades. As we've called it here in these lands idiosyncratically for many years. It does have an actual name. <laughs> Is she going for a second one? Another Weeping Blades? Auto wound on six. It's not going to happen. Marisa doesn't want any more Weeping Blades and neither would I. Poison is of course very dangerous. I'm talking about Warhammer, drifting, drifting in, in topic. I've started going sideways. Oh, decisive kick. Is Risa rattled enough for Iz Izumi to take the advantage? She's setting something up. Oh, advanced Weeping Blades is about to happen. Is Risa even aware? Was she? Oh, Risa, she knows. She's playing possum there, hanging in that, that, that position. The Hanging Gardens of Babylon, it might be called in different times, but certainly not these times, so we won't call it that. Oh, Azumi's not happy about this. She's firing up a bit. Oh, cradled and swung. Oh, beautiful move. Straight up to the turnbuckle. Double knees. Powerful stuff. Risa Serra. Battle-hardened, seriously, the scars on her body say more about her than I ever can. Ooh, well-placed kick. Risa looks like she's been rocked. Nonetheless, she's rising to her feet. She's not out, she's got this. Oh, straight over. The AA. Azumi's not done. Azumi can't be done. She can't give up that easily. Those points, they matter. They matter at this stage. Oh. Oh, Azumi just rolls over like the thief she is. Attempting to steal this win. Although I wouldn't dare call it theft. It would be well earned. It's the sushi. No. No. Also known as the man catcher. Oh, Risa Seraph. She did it. Reversing the pin. Oh, the cunning. The quick wittedness. The instinctual reversal of that pin. Beautiful stuff. I could call it magical. I could. But I won't. I want that on record. No, Risa's very happy with this result. Azumi's got to be stung by this. Azumi Sushi reversal, as we see. Listed there as the winning move. Quite accurately. No, shake hands. Yes, a shaking of hands, and an earnest one by the looks of it. A good measure of respect between these two, it seems. That's good to see. The sportsmanship... Risa Serra, 10 points. Azumi still tied with Himeka. This, this block is far from decided at this point. <laughs> Something of a bemused look on Risa Serra's face there. <laughs> she exits the arena, the winner. Well-deserved match. Well-deserved victory. Oh, and we've got a pause again. Three, two, one...
Pause. Oh, I'm looking forward to this one. I have banished the squeaky chair to the other side of the room. Sorry about that. I didn't realize it was so squeaky. <laughs> and yet it is. So it's gone. Now we're about to witness Tam Nakano versus Unagi Sayaka. Two of my favorite wrestlers. I'm very much looking forward to this. Now, as I've confessed, I'm a little out of the loop on stardom. You know, I haven't been able to follow it fully, so I'm not sure of the level of bad blood between these two, even though they do both belong to the Cosmic Angels faction. There's Unagi Sayaka. Looking great, as always. Dramatic posing. Kabuki mono. And a very high ponytail, too, I'd like to note. I wonder if that augurs some sort of special battle strategy. She is here with bells on, literally. The extravagant costume, bright colors, excellent stuff. She's got a spring and a step, that's for sure. I hope she's ready. Unagi's a fine wrestler, but Tamu is one of the best. She's about to make her entrance right now. Tam Nakano, really one of the great highlights of stardom over the whole time I've been watching it. It's always, always a pleasure to see her. Here she comes. Wintry hood, halberd in hand. She is armed. That's not uncommon. <laughs> and she's bearing her title belt. One of the goddess of stardom tag title belts. She shares that title with uh, Natsupoi, of course. There's Natsupoi right there, holding the ropes open for her faction leader, Wakatsukiyama, handing the halberd back to Tamu. She goes up to pose, looking great. Looking like some sort of wintry queen, as far as I'm concerned. What a star. How is this match going to go down? I really don't know. I like, could... Honestly, tournament matches, you never know. They could go either way. Quite often, the favourite gets tripped up. I'll try not to talk over our man Ando here as he does the ring introductions. A little bit uncouth. Good luck in this match, Unagi. I favour both of these wrestlers. I have no favourites here. Ah, yes. Tamu blowing the crowd a customary kiss before the match. Well received, I dare say. Unagi looks serious, though, man. Look at her. It's a serious match. There's a point disparity between these two in this tournament, though. Tam is on eight points, and Unagi is on a mere two, I believe. But let's not let that color our expectations here. Even though Tamu's on eight, she is not within striking range of Azumi and Himeka, who are the leaders of this block. That is not striking range. All right, here we go. No one's in any rush. There's a certain serious energy, a little bit of an electricity between them here, actually. This is a face-off. Words are being spoken. I can't hear them. Oh, 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 oh. oh a swift slap and a demand for a response from Unagi. Tamu shall answer. Oh, just staring daggers. Strike blocked. Unagi's making a move. Tamu behind. Oh, Swift, that's a deadly kick. Unagi's going for that arm. She is. She, yes, absolutely. Disable that arm. It'll disable many maneuvers. The violet screwdriver, one of them, <laughs> which is one of the deadliest moves in all of pro wrestling, it's worth saying. We may see it tonight. You'll know it when you see it. Because I'll tell you. 
Oh, a leg drop on the arm. It's unheard of. Unagi, vicious. She's just vicious. She wants that arm out of the equation. Unagi has a beautiful leg drop. I was going to bring that up, but here she is, busting it out straight off. Here on the outside, we're out in the danger zone. Oh, Tamu. That was a rough move to take for Tamu. To face straight into those crash pads on the outside. Oh, Unagi is taking every advantage. She knows what she's up against. This is a sign of respect towards Tamu as far as I'm concerned. Worthy opponent is a, is a phrase that describes probably both of these, but Tamu more so than most. Oh, Nagi's making a move. Nope. Nope. No, it was Tamu swift drop kick. Unagi bowled back. Oh, Tamu's sensing something. She's going somewhere. She's going up. She's up on top of the turnbuckle. This is going to be something to the outside. Admonishment to be careful from our ring man. Whoa. Unagi taking that splash fully. Couple of other Joshi in the, the blast radius there. Mina and Natsupoi. Not too badly, though. Unagi took the bulk of that. Uh, we're all friends here, I'm sure. All cosmic angels in this match. The referee's checking on both wrestlers. We may see a count if they don't make it to the ring in a, a timely fashion. If it looks like they're not going back, the referee will count. They don't start the counts immediately. And in scenarios such as this, it's a bit of a grace period. Now we're back in the ring. Unagi is, is well and truly dazed. Tamu's trying to take advantage of this. Beautiful knee. Spare no one. As it is called idiosyncratically, <laughs> Tamu's knee. It's called violet shooting properly. We call it spare no one for, oh, for reasons. <laughs> now we're both on the outside. There's a steady... Steady animosity coming out of Tamu there, as there frequently is. In Final Fantasy terms, I'm sure she's a warrior. That's why she has a halberd. She may have a beast gauge. She almost definitely has a beast gauge, but don't tell her I said that. She might take it the wrong way. I don't mean it the wrong way, but you never know. Mm-hmm. No, Nagi rising to this challenge. The Battle of Boots. Oh, Tamu's getting the worst of it now, though. She may regret calling for this. She, she started it. This is your fault, Tamu. This is all on you. Oh, vicious stomp. Right up on the shoulder. A leg drop, yes. Beautiful leg drop. Absolutely. Top ten. And a pin to follow. Oh, yes. Unagi ascendant right now. Getting Tamu in position. Stretching a, in that uh, gory stretch position, I think it's called. My memory fails me. <laughs> if I ever do this again, it's going to be better researched. Oh, beautiful hold. Look at that. Tamu is fully stretched. She's in no contact with the mat. There's no scooching. The ropes are nowhere. She just has to endure. Unagi held it as long as she could. No submission was put forth from Tamu. So we're just returning to the, to the classic striking game here. Tamu in the corner. Getting set up. Get in. Code breaker. Yes. Tamu was getting rocked out there. Tamu was pinned, but not for three. You can hear the calls of support for Tamu occasionally on the outside coming from Natsupoi, her tag partner. Calling for Tamu-san. What's Unagi got from the top? Boy, a frog splash, no less! Immediately into a pin. No, three. Not this time. Not yet. Oh, she's calling for the end of the match, though. Unagi's confident. She's got all the momentum at the moment. 
Hook those arms. Turn around. Oh, Tamu wants none of this move. The name of which I've forgotten. It has a spectacular name, I'm sure. Beautiful backdrop. Vicious out of Tamu. This is her chance. That was the move that's going to turn things. If anything does, that'll do it. That was a real, real solid move. Lariat, no, not a lariat. Oh, beautiful suplex. A tiger suplex. Those arms hooked behind. Guaranteeing a rough landing. Tamu's going for it again. She's, no, Nagi's out. Nagi knows. Nagi knows she can't let Tamu get that momentum. She's in a decent position right now, though. Rattled, stunned, perhaps, but... You know, we could get somewhere from here. Tamu taking her time to get up. It's no surprise, considering the last maneuver she was in. Natsupoi pounding the mat in the back there. For encouragement. Oh, each with a handful of hair, using each other to get up. Jaw oh, explode. This, another duel may break out. No. Tamu's too quick. She's bailed up. That's, oh, that is a hold and a half. That is, Unagi's in a terrible position. We're in a, we're in a brilliant, oh, no way. I was going to say we're in a brilliant position to see the anguish on Unagi's face, but the move has turned. She's being stretched like a mad woman. If mad women stretch, I assume they do. The ropes might as well be in the Gobi Desert. I still think we can get there. I think Unagi can scooch a little. Scooch a bit more. Scooch at all. Unagi's just trapped. Very little, like, lateral motion across the mat at all. The referee's demanding a response from Unagi. He's right on top of the situation. Tamu's turning it. Unagi is just in a triangle there. The neck is being, well, I wouldn't say choked, but there's definitely a, a look. The arm is trapped. That's a whole other thing. Tam's released the hold. Unagi looks like she's completely out of it. If Tamu's going to do something, now's the time. She's going to have to pull Unagi to her feet if she wants to land her move. She may go for the violet screwdriver from this position. I wouldn't be surprised. That's what I would do if I could do such a maneuver. She's reviving Unagi, a few sharp slaps across the face. Sharp being generous, they look a little languid to me. Oh, Tamu has that beautiful spinning kick. Unagi struck back down to the mat, just like the Balrog being smote onto the mountainside. No, she's back with fire, unlike the Balrog. Except the Balrog has fire, you know what I mean. Unagi's breathing fire. Oh, another sharp kick right on the jaw. Absolutely scintillating that was. Unagi grabbing the knee pad of Tamu, the top kawaii of the cosmos that knee pad promises. I'm not going to argue. Oh, smote. No. Oh. Tamu demands that Unagi rise. She does. The spare no one. Right off the ropes. Unagi, come on. Yes. She's still in it. My sympathies are drifting all the way over to Unagi. Oh, Tamu. This could be it. Violet screwdriver time, perhaps. It is. Unagi's in serious danger. This is it. Oh, the suspense! Good gravy! Unagi, is she even alive? Three, easy three! Violet Screwdriver finishes it decisively. Well, that work on the arm early on did not dissuade Tamu from using it. That move, of course, invented by Scott Steiner, as was called the Steiner Screwdriver in those days. Well, today it's the Violet Screwdriver, and it is a killer! All credit to Tamu there. 
was a great match. Tammu's lost one of her glittery little teardrop whatsies under her eye there. Somewhere in the chaos, but one remains. A win. But Tamu, she's looks like she's really taken a lot out of her. This this match has drained Tamu of a great deal of her zest. And I shouldn't be surprised by this, mind you. It's what a match. Very hard hitting. Very good and well fought. Now we're going to see some camaraderie here in the final moments. You can see the disappointment on Unagi's face. The violet screwdriver did its work, but she's still moving. She is still alive. We can only imagine what is passing between these two wrestlers at this point. I would assume a litany of encouragement, yes, and a hug. That's the stuff. That's the stuff of dreams. See, this this is what you want. This kind of camaraderie in a in a faction. After a hard fought battle, comrades embracing. A worthy match, worthy opponents, worthy of each other and worthy of us. Worth watching. Price of admission. What is she looting? Part of Unagi's costume. And she receives it. I wonder what that was. Hold it up. Tamu. It says Tamu. <laughs> That's very sweet. That is very sweet. I hadn't noticed that until just now. What a gesture. She was wearing Tamu on her top all along. What a fool I was for questioning the the the, the camaraderie. Imagine bad blood between these two. Impossible. Just serious. High quality wrestling. That was great. Just the best. There's Waka Tsukiyama presenting Tamu's belt back to her in humble squire like fashion, which is an incredible sight. Good work, Tamu. Wear that belt with pride. Leave in victory. Unagi may need to be helped out i'm not sure if she's fully ambulatory at the moment i wouldn't be after a screwdriver now oh, there she is yeah it looks like mina's got a mina and saki capital letter saki both helping unagi out to the back there's the updated scores tamu on 10 right in the the solid mid-range block of this this um this side of the tournament what a great match i love that and the next one's going to be just as good. Speaking of, time to pause. Three, two, one, pause. All right, main event time. At last, we are going to see Suzu Suzuki, a wrestler who I haven't seen nearly enough of at this stage, versus Mayu Iwatani, the icon of stardom. A well-deserved title that Mayu has, has held in perpetuity, perhaps. <laughs> she deserves it. But first, the entrance of Suzu Suzuki. I've only seen her a bare few times. I don't know that much about her, just off the cuff. I'm excited to see what she can do. Again. I'm excited to see more. She is a compatriot of Risa Serra in the Prominence uh, Wrestling Group. She's a hardcore fighter, no doubt. There's Risa Serra coming out in support of Suzu. Suzu has got a wonderful, like, entrance gear, by the way. It reminds me of a certain countess I encountered once on the border of Stirland, just north of the moot there. Here comes Mayu.
My who favours the dramatic stall for the correct point in the music before appearing. We're lingering on Suzu here. Ah, here we go. Mayu Iwatani. There she is. I can see the phantom. The phantom of her approach. Fully masked. Fully geared up. In an absolute Harlequin-esque panoply of colours. A riot of colours, I dare say. That entrance mask, of course, completing the look. Prominent ears, cat-like, as is a tradition in these realms. Well, not these realms, but those realms where Mayu lurks. If there is a conversation about best wrestlers alive in this world, Mayu must be mentioned in my estimation. She has fully earned immortality in my book. That's right. I think she is one of the best Male or female, it matters not. No matter the division, league or context, Mayu Iwatani is top tier for certain. Suzu Suzuki. And she looks great. Oh, Mayu. Her, oh, what happened? She hurls this, this wristband on a ball into the crowd, into the nebulous wilderness of the crowd. It went somewhere. Mayu is something of a genius at wrestling, but she's, you know, a little questionable in other areas, I'll say. Oh, this match ought to be good. I've only seen Suzu a few times, as I say, but I know she's good. And I know for certain Mayu is good, having watched her for ooh, close to five years, I believe. All right, here we go. The bell is rung. Anything could happen. Main event time. Mayu is, of course, the leader of the Stars faction here in Stardom. She has a giant fluffy tail coming out of the back of her costume there. A tribute to her dog, Pochi, I believe. She has her dog's name on her knee pad. But you've got to love your pets, man. It's, it's just what you do. Oh, look at this tentative lock-up. Oh, Mayu just breaking it immediately with a kick. Taking no chances. Suzu's pushing her out. No, holding on. Oh, immediate other headlock. The beautiful play by Suzu. Shall we see the same again? Nope. Suzu sent off, parried that drop kick. Mayu bailed over. Whoa, this opening flurry. Oh, reverse elbow. Beautiful move by Mayu. Suzu perhaps unwisely going to the outside. Mayu is very... Oh, she knew. She baited Mayu into that. That was so clever. That's what it takes to beat someone like Mayu. You gotta trick him. You gotta trick him and then you gotta hit him with something that ca Hey! Hey! The savagery of Suzu striking out at Hanan, I believe. A little, little uncalled for there. Do you get back in the ring? The referee's back is turned, closed fists. Technically, you're not supposed to do it, but I believe it happens all the time. Oh, words being exchanged. <laughs> My Japanese isn't quite good enough to pick up on this. My Japanese is barely good enough to get through the day, and I don't even live in Japan. Get in there. Bail her in. That's better. 
Let's do this in the ring. None of this outside shenanigans. Good, honest wrestling. Let's see it. Yeah, stomp. That counts. That counts. Huh? How long is that tail going to last on Mayu? It's a miracle it's still there. It usually flies off at some point. Ooh, Maya was literally on the ropes here. Susie's taking full advantage. That's a crack in the carapace of Mayu Iwatani. The icon of stardom. Oh, she is flattened at the moment, though. But I've seen Mayu in worse positions than this. She can certainly recover. Mayu just draped on the ropes. Suzu appealing to the crowd, and they immediately get behind her. Well, who could refuse? Oh, whipped. Mayu slippery, ever slippery. Now's her chance. She's broken that streak of bad luck. There's a good look at the pochi knee pad. Mayu loves her dog. Hey, look, that's, that that uh, negates any any dispersions anyone could make on her character. Anyone who loves their dog is all right by me. Cats, too, frankly. Cats are all right. Well, that's a whole other thing. The wrestling is happening. Ooh, this could be an almighty duel of forearms if it comes to that. There's a lot of pushback on both of those hits so far. Let's see another. Uh, Mayu holding steady. Oh, no, maybe not. Maybe not. It's looking like a titan after the princeps has been killed there, staggering to one side. Oh. Nice elbow. Here we go. Oh, it's, it's Susu's broken from that, that duel of forearms. She's coming back. And she's taking the... Taking the initiative here, getting her own flurry in. Mayu down, but swiftly back up, not completely defeated. Suzu's going to make a charge action, it looks like. Declaring a charge, failed. Mayu swift with the feet. Careful. Mayu is sharp. Yo. The crowd immediately switches sides as soon as Mayu declares... She calls for them and they answer. Elaborate arm drag. Sending Suzu all the way over to the other side of the ring where she waits further punishment unless she can rally. Mayu's on top of it. Chew, beautiful, deadly drop kick. Right on. That is an armor piercing drop kick, if anything is. That's it. And a pin. Look at Mayu's hands. Right on the, the arm that must come up. That is a that is a very smart pinning pinning strategy. She's repositioning her opponent. Now hold steady. Oh no, Susu's not out of this. Susu's getting up. Susu has a look on her face like she's really enjoying this. And I would hope so. Being in the ring with one of the best and doing well. You can't ask for more than that. Imagine winning. Oh, the headbutt. Devastating. Guaranteeing Mayu's stunned. Oh, the Frankensteiner from the top. Mayu is definitely rattled. Those eyes are wandering. She's getting some feeling back into that hand as well, by the looks of it. Some nerves might have been struck. I would not be surprised at all. Oh, the look on the face of Suzu. She, was, she had a killer look in her eye. She wanted that initial kick. She had to take the consolation kick. It's enough, though. She has command. Oh, beautiful suplex. Taking immediate command of the back of Mayu and just hurling her over. Tremendous move. Mayu's going to... Oh, I was going to say she's going to get bailed up, but it's just not happening. Oh, Mayu using the full fulcrum of her body to bring Suzu down. Suzu Suzuki... She's rallying. She's rallying very effectively. But Mayu's ready. Mayu's got something ready for her. Yep. Straight to the head. She's down. Referee's checking. 
She is respondent, though. The other arm is coming up. <laughs> Not the arm the referee raised. The other one, straight to the forehead. She's sweating it out there. Mayu's up. What follows? Oh, a stomp. Absolutely lethal. That's a pin. No way. Suzu is still in this. Suzu's got vigor, man. That's that's what she's got, if nothing else. And a bit of a mean streak. The killer instinct is strong with this one. But Maya was basically a wrestling elemental. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> she's from the plane of wrestling. And she's, whoa! I didn't even see what happened there. It happened so quick. Some kind of swift move was made. The balance is in, in, in jeopardy. Could swing either way here. Suzu, decisive move out of Suzu. Mayu is down, rattled, twitching, spasming somewhat on the ground there. Holding her face. Now I bet it hurts, Mayu. You have my full sympathy. Ooh. Mayu's just cringing and grimacing. She's got to get up. She's got to get to her feet, step by step, one one moment at a time. She's down. She's flopped. No, here she comes. No, she's down again. Look at Susu's face. They're going to use each other to get up in quite a vicious way, actually. Very aesthetic. Do I love it? Oh, whoa! Holy smokes! I've never seen that before. That is a pin of the gods. It didn't work. My thief's out of it. A fortitude save at the very least. Some sort of ward save, maybe. A pin save, definitely. Absolutely beautiful. I'm going to have to look that up. What that move was. It was absolutely beautiful from this angle. God, oh, gorgeous German smile straight up. Holy smokes. Dragon suplex. Are they just going to trade suplexes for the rest of time? Hey, that could happen. Mayu's got the momentum. Oh, Suzu's not down. I thought Suzu must have been down from that. Surely, that last strike. Mayu's on her knees. Platoon-like. Oh. Suzu's got that look on her face again. Suzu's looking dangerous out there. There's a lot of Suzu Suzuki support out there. A little bit of a tongue twister. Ooh, direct headbutt right to the crown of Mayu. She's wavering like a reed in the wind. Oh, gee whiz. Beautiful move. I don't have a name for it. No, oh, Mayu is not out. Mayu is not done. That was some half Nelson twisting bomb thing. Look at that. Suzu's on the warpath. She senses victory. Oh, German, you bridge it. No, she's not bridging. She's rolling straight over. Another one is coming. Oh, jeez. No, Mayu thieves. Mayu's pinning. Mayu's got her. Holy smokes, that is pinned. Oh, that's it. Mayu gets out of it through pure wrestling skill. They're still entangled. Good gravy. Mayu, get out of there. Suzu was mad about it. Referee, Daichi, get out of the way. Daichi correctly protecting Mayu there from the wrath of Suzu, who did not expect to get pinned. I didn't expect her to get pinned. That was an incredible finish to a great match. Hey, Suzu was spectacular out there. Spectacular stuff. Mayu was excellent as ever. I am fully switched on to Suzu Suzuki, though. I'm putting a, putting a special note in my diary to view 100% more of Suzu Suzuki. Then a little bit more Mayu as well, actually, now as I'm at liberty to catch up more fully with stardom. Mayu lording her three count over Suzu. Oh, the fingers! Suzu's having none of that, and so she should. Just deserts Mayu. You shouldn't do that. Very rude. The Daichi's down. This is turning into chaos. Mayu, you know better than that. Uh, maybe she doesn't. I don't know. She's not really from Earth. She's from the elemental plane of wrestling, as I've said before. As evidenced by the finish of this match. Basically a miraculous, magical reversal of a pin. Not for the first time in her career either has she won in such a fashion. 
Mayu Iwatani, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely top shelf. Top deck. There's Ida Saya with a bag of stones to ease the, the hurts of Mayu. Who calls for a microphone. And luckily, this is more than likely going to be subtitled by our man Sonny out there who works for Stardom. Kanbanwa! Thank you, Mayu. Oh, jeez. Careful there, Mayu. Believe me, I am there in spirit, Mayu. I'm, I'm right there with you. My ghost. Uh, looks like Mayu's going to have to be poured into a bucket and carried out the back, frankly. <laughs> Yes, good point. She's still in with a shot. And good for her. As is tradition, the winning faction <laughs> gets to close the show. Normally the, the winning wrestler does it, but it looks like Mayu is out of... Out of she's in bits! Maya is completely in bits. Get a shovel. Ida, get a shovel. Hanan's out there. Ida's there. They're right. Good. Momo Kogo have all come to, to Mayu's rescue. She does not want to stand up. Big damage all round. Ah, that she did. Two cauldrons. Well, two Itabashis is what did it. Plenty to be proud about there. Talk about taking the initiative. Ida's doing it. Mm-hmm. The full support of everybody involved. The crowd is behind her. Mayu's behind her. Oh, go get it right! You you gotta do it properly if you gotta do it. Oh, the shame! Oh, Saya Ida. They just just bail out. We're bailing out the last minute. Pass it over to Hanan. Ret <laughs> oh, damn it! Poor Ida. The final hit point has been removed. We gotta do our traditional closing pose. Come on, get it together. Stars, ooh, good. And that brings us to the end of this fabulous show. A couple of real 10 out of 10 matches in my estimation. That last one takes the cake, though. I am fully into Suzu Suzuki. I've made a special note here on my notepad which is a little sparsely decorated with notes, I dare say, that most of them aren't related to the wrestling. <laughs> I'm going to have to fix that if I ever do this again. That is 10 out of 10 show. Mayu winning in spectacular fashion. Thank you for joining me here on this commentary. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's a little bit of an impromptu thing, a little bit of a wild draw for me. It's not the, not the usual fare in these realms. But, you know, it had a little bit of momentum from working on other things. So here we are, seeing stars off, victorious faction, <laughs> Ida Saya bearing the entrance mask of Mayu. In honourable, that's another squire-like move. There's quite a bit of chivalry in the Joshi wrestling, I've noticed, in the years that I've been watching it. Quite a bit of chivalry, quite a bit of, quite a bit of romance, chivalric romance, is a little bit of barbarism, frankly, a little bit of barbarism and a bit of muscularity as well, and who could ask for more? Well, there's the crowd rising to leave, and so must we. 
It's been a real pleasure to record this. I didn't think it'd be quite this much fun. I've had a great time here watching Joshi wrestling, as is something of my habit. And I hope you've enjoyed it out there as well. I'm sure I've made all sorts of stupid mistakes in this commentary, but that's all right. It doesn't matter. I've had a great time, and someone out there must have had a great time, and maybe it was you. It's been a real pleasure once more to share another one of my hobbies with you. Until next time we meet, I'm the Bard. Rats that look like men, bleh.